Thank you for listening to Mailbox Money, your guided tour through safe, sacred, and speculative investing with a plan and a purpose to do more good with newfound peace of mind. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Mailbox Money. In today's episode, we are going to dissect and discuss and thoroughly kind of go through one of the most uh, accepted financial planning tools and strategies that that we have seen in our career. Um, We're going to talk about today what is called the safe withdrawal rate. And the safe withdrawal rate is something that almost every single retiree or financial planner or do-it-yourself investor has come across and has used um, for the baseline kind of strategy for designing portfolios and pulling income from those portfolios throughout your freedom day or throughout your retirement lifetime. And and what we're going to do is talk about how Ryan and I um, both independently could see some issues with the, the safe withdrawal rate. Um, and the solution that we're going to present at the end of this is an elegant solution based on math. I want to emphasize that it's not based off of hope. It's not based off of historical tests or, or what we, the odds of, of something happening. This is based on real math. And so we're just going to walk through this. Um, and Ryan, if you can just kind of dive into the, the safe withdrawal rate, what it is, why in the world it got so popular. And then we'll start talking about some of the problems and some of the difficulties associated with using this safe withdrawal rate is, and I want to call it like kind of not in our view, but in, in a lot of the view or in, in the view of a lot of people, kind of the gold standard for retirement income planning. Yeah, and, and stick around, and, and we're going to need you because you are very polite to say <laughs> there may be some issues. I, I, I'm going to absolutely um, gut some of these false assumptions of which I carried some myself and what we have learned from inside the belly of the beast. I sat early in my career where at the largest bank and brokerage, you sat at the home of more retirement accounts than any place on the planet. And we learned and we watched. I saw all of the plans before this better solution. I want to give this safe withdrawal rate all the credit in the world that it duly deserved because prior to a safer withdrawal rate is 4% per year, I was seeing the most sophisticated plans walk out the door that says if the market goes up 10% every year, you should take out seven and you'd be just fine. You don't need anything else. I mean, that, so that's where we're coming from. And that's what those, those plans, I mean, and, and they turned retirement dreams upside down um, and ended in tears. What we want to do today very efficiently, if we can, is I, I think we're here, and the reason we talk, call the show Mailbox Money is we want to turn retirement planning industry completely upside down with a better, simpler playbook. Safe withdrawal rate, the credit goes to a professor who calculated, I'm generalizing here, a lot of different inputs, which we're going to go through some of what doesn't get discussed enough, but a 4% withdrawal on a nest egg in a retirement, you should be just fine. And our industry ran with that. There's a couple of, let's just zoom out, a couple of major issues. Sure. <laughs> uh, as as the data and math nerd here, that one of them is that's based on one country's, the United States performance over the best 100 years of any economic expansion in the history of time. So you say, well, that's, I mean, if you're going to cherry pick, that's a pretty good one to use. I give them all the credit. Again, that's good data. It's all valid. It should work based on all the history we've had. And it usually works. My, my biggest issue is with that, which we'll get to in, in, in a little bit here. I, I don't want anything <laughs> that I'm relying on to usually work. Um, <laughs> a, a different professor has come along and said, well, yeah, if you did that with any number of 20 other major countries, all of a sudden it worked 68% of the time. That's my first big uh-oh. The original rule was based also on a average 30 year retirement, which has changed considerably in the 30 years that I've been doing this now. A lot of folks aren't retired for 30 years. 
healthcare costs are considerably different than they were when this rule was written. I, I think if the question and the data and the inputs change, so should the outputs. Um, and importantly, and this is where we get in the weeds for people and a little nerdy, but it's math and it's a big deal, that 4% doesn't count on any friction from right. expenses, taxes, or most importantly, any flinches in behavior. So what we want to do is, is, is answer the question that we spent a career dedicated to. I think there's a simpler solution that stands the test of all times and removes all friction and flinches. Um, and I'll just end that, that backstory of where it came from with a quote from the godfather of the 4% safe withdrawal rule. He said, I think a retirement portfolio is a balloon with two holes. One is returns, the other is withdrawals. If ideal, you'd like to have an even match. I'm gonna politely say, I think we can do considerably better. <laughs> I think it's a lot more than that. Um, and that's what we're gonna to discuss today and chop it up and I look forward to it. Yeah, so I, I think one thing that's that's kind of worth doing at, at this point in the conversation is just kind of painting a picture of what a portfolio would look like that's set up based off of the 4% withdrawal rule. So there's X percent of the account in bonds and there's X percent of the account in, in U.S. equities um, being generous. If, if you have diversified assets outside of the U.S., which we understand the powers of diversification, but saying you're concentrated in the U.S. and, and U.S., uh, bonds, U.S. stocks and bonds, then based off of historical returns, if everything continues as normal in the future, not accounting for healthcare costs or increased costs of, of living or anything other than a standard 30-year 30, 30 retirement, you should be okay to take 4% from the portfolio each year. And those are the assumptions that the entire industry ran with. Um, I'm sitting in the middle of the world's largest retirement account brokerage and custodial platform and advisory platform, seeing everybody, every single portfolio that came across my screen was based on this. And just kind of understanding the all of the things that have to go right in order for these people that are trusting professionals that are saying, hey, you can take 4% of the account out per year and you'll be fine and you can live on that. Ignoring everything else, let you know personal variables aside, the market has to continue doing what it's done. Um, to me, that just didn't seem like something that I personally wanted to bet on, and let alone any of the clients that I have a fiduciary duty that that I'm working for and, and serving to the best of my ability. I didn't feel comfortable with that math, and so. Is there a better way? Is there something else that we can use to decrease? the risk and increase the likelihood that someone can pull money out of their portfolio and and have a comfortable life and accomplish everything that they are hoping to accomplish throughout their non-working years. And I'll get back to the math here in a second, but I've learned and we witnessed the psychology of this. Um, you know, all anxiety is born from the same thing, some expectation of some sort. And it doesn't, doesn't have to start as a bad idea. I mean, we're supposed to expect certain historical returns, we are told. Um, I, I think that sets up the dysfunctional relationship folks have with the market um, and, and what they expect. And I just never liked the idea. It felt to me like the safest and the best current plan out there was analogous to trying to optimize and figure out a way to coast into the gas station on fumes for the second half of your life, which is really not what very special people were working really hard to do. Um, and, and I wouldn't sign up for any plan. And all, all of this is based even with the best data that I have severe issues with of about an 80% success rate, by the way, like most right. of the time, that's what we meant by we said most of the time it should work. Um, it would be to me like saying, one of the next five days, you're not going to make it home with gas. None of us would be okay with that. We would all stop and do things differently. We would fill up. If we can't afford it, we'd stay later, work longer, or move, 
And that's how I look at something. And I'm not even going to call it retirement anymore, because when I say I want to turn the retirement industry upside down, that, that that's when we both left those giant firms where we give a lot of credit to learning all sorts. And we wouldn't be here today without that playbook, but it was really more a process of elimination of things that I learned people didn't need. And more importantly, watching and learning from them something that was better and more inspiring than retirement. A freedom day is to walk away and live on free cash flow, which we're going to get to in a second. That's what I get really excited about. And, and not withdrawing principle or projections. And that's what I always say, if you remember and take away anything from this episode of which we're going to keep unpacking and share every page of our playbook that we've learned does last the test of time would be the next time you hear any of these debates and it will be endless i actually think they will increase i said two years ago if i was in the movie business i would write the next big short part two it would be the safe withdrawal rate and it has to be something just like the last big short with with the mortgage meltdown that everybody assumes is safe that's a good starting point um I think that if there's one line or, or quick acronym to remember as a rule that will last for you, it would be when you hear one of these safe withdrawal rates updated, debated, is say, whoa. And to me, that is W-H-O-A, withdrawals of hoped, withdrawing hopes of appreciation is not a plan. It's a prediction. And free cash flow, which we would much prefer to live on, no matter how long it takes us to work and save enough to have risk-free source of income and a rising income source, that free cash flow is not withdrawing any principal, and it is not relying on a market that always goes up that doesn't. People talk about bulls and bears. What I'm more worried about stress testing math against is the markets that I've lived through where 13 years the market goes nowhere. If you're withdrawing principal and you're hoping appreciation makes up for it later, that ain't a plan. It's not going to work. And that's being very polite. So I'm going to end that background of the withdrawal guru and shifting to a better solution, what we see going forward, with one more quote. He said, I think there is a good chance of this continuing to work, the safe withdrawal rate, unless we get into a severe inflationary environment. And admittedly, very humbly, and again, I give all the respect in the world to him, he sold his advisory practice. He is now admitted to using a market timing methodology for a new allocation. So if the godfather of the rule, and people say, let's sit in rocket science, it's pretty difficult because he was an actual rocket scientist. If he can't stick to his own plan that everybody took and ran with, I would just at the very least give yourself, anybody listening to this, whether you're a beginner or the most sophisticated plan, we've seen each end of that spectrum, give yourself permission to breathe a little easier. Anybody can mess this up. And there is a simpler solution. It's not about finding and figuring out, is this more difficult? Do I need to go read 10 more blogs or do two more studies? It's a PhD, it's a CFA. I actually think the elusive holy grail is a simpler solution. So every time I think about this idea of, of turning the safe withdrawal rate upside down, I, I'm reminded of something I learned in school when I was a kid, and it was the food pyramid. And you know, the base layer of the food pyramid, and this was like the holy grail of the best way to eat and, and to be healthy, you know, had things at the bottom like you know, starches and uh, carbohydrates and, and sugars. And then up at the very top, you got, you know, things like a steak or meat or eggs. And, you know, that was the, that the golden standard of health as practiced and teached, uh, taught in public schools for, I don't know, 50 years, 60 years. But then as the new science and the new data rolls out, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a perfect inversion of the food pyramid, but there's lots of longevity studies and, and all the health gurus out there saying, wait a second, maybe we shouldn't be eating a loaf of bread every single day. You know, there's this thing called blood sugar that's really important to regulate. And so I, I like that as a visual for um, as the new data and as the new math and the new markets roll in, the new yields, the new growth rates in, in economies and in markets come in, um, it's worth it to take a step back and just say, hey, 
you know, is this data worth analyzing and worth potentially moving some things around or replanning and, and creating a new strategy for, for my distributions? And it, I, I know that that might be a, a simplistic example or, or kind of analogy for what we're doing here, but what we're saying very clearly is the safe withdrawal rate we ought to take that safe word out of this and we ought to look at the math and the expectations and what we can plan for moving forward and, and create a new strategy that's better, that creates more peace, more resiliency, and build our plan based off of that instead of the hoped for appreciation. I'm just I'm gonna dispel another myth that I've always had an issue with, especially in our industry one of the most agreed upon and if you notice the common trend with all these episodes is avoid the crowds. <laughs> right. with, with better math and it leads to better psychology and that most elusive piece. And that's why we Grindex um, is our only benchmark, which you can look up that episode for, for even bigger smiles. Um, but one quote I have extreme issue with is the most dangerous words in investing are this time it's different. Which is to say, I think at best that's lazy. Like I don't want to do work in case it really is different. <laughs> I just want to assume it always works. Um, or at worst, it's severe confirmation bias, and we're learning more and more about our own hardwiring, right? And how much behavior is at play. And I, that's why I used this example earlier. Um, if it can happen to the smartest of us. Um, so in my lifetime, the eight times the stock market has been down, every one of those times, the bond market has been up. So we talk about cherry picking one country in one time period. Most advisors, the entire career has lived through a period of time where the bond market happened to have a huge tailwind. We talk about stock market returns, but declining interest rates and gigantic total returns from bonds. So all of a sudden, this time is very different. We are in a year where both stocks and bonds in any version of any 60, 40, alloc that's why I've said for years, it's not an allocation. It's not a prediction. It's not a projection that's going to work. And I think way too much time is spent on that. Um, so I think this time is very, very different. That flawed math is going to be exposed. So the new tweaks, before we get and talk about what brought Jackson and I together and what mailbox money is, just a preview of what the, the challenges to the safe withdrawal rate, the new smartest out there. I, I mentioned the, the PhD and the CFA earlier, the new guru on safe withdrawal rates, he's, his answer is 2.4% is the new withdrawal rate. I, I have issue with that too. So, but before you get too worried about that, there's another solution that says you can take out much more than 4%. There's another one that just says you adjust it by inflation. Uh oh, we're going to run out of money real fast. But the, I think the most agreed upon, the best I've seen from people I respect a great deal that went through all the different safe withdrawal rates said, we propose something like a guardrail strategy where you take out more and enjoy it early, and then you set guardrails based on market returns of how much you rate. And in every one of those cases, I just try to imagine the guy and the gal listening to this, working their tails off, doing the right thing. I think this should be something so much better than a retirement plan that involves that last day you sign up all of a sudden for the first time in your life, a plan where I am absolutely okay with getting pay cuts for the first time in my life. And I'm going to adjust my lifestyle around predictions and projections and market returns. I'm just not okay with that. I would rather be told the truth, what I need to hear, not what I want to hear and say, actually, if you work a little bit longer and save a little bit more, your free cash flow and interest and dividends alone can be significantly higher than a 4% safe withdrawal rate. We talked about this a couple episodes ago. It could be four, five, six, eight, ten percent 10% free right. cash flow, no withdrawals of principal at any age with any starting amount, with any size nest egg. This is not, and I think I'll, I'll end here and give the ball to you, Jackson since you were the polite one on this episode, and I appreciate that, and I know the listeners do if they're still with it. <laughs> um, the, the, this notion of being willing and able to live on this free cash flow and what it can unlock is what I get excited about. And, and the biggest 
simplest starting point that I would reframe for anybody listening to this, certainly if they're starting, but even if they're close to that big time, half time of their life where they're wondering, am I going to be okay? And how much is enough? This question should not be about the size of your account, but at what income level all of your needs and wants are covered. And that is freedom day. And that's why um, I'll post a link to the show, but we talk about our one page plan. And when, when somebody sits down with us and goes through their, uh, you know, their assets and their portfolio, we look at, Hey, look, or we plan for the day where we say, Hey, look, the income that your portfolio is generating. And I want to dive into income just really quick, not how much you can pull from the portfolio based off of certain market conditions. We're talking about the dividends that you receive as a shareholder of companies. When that income, which is real, it's coming out of the portfolio, it's paid to you and will continue to be paid to you along with a risk-free stream of income, from a personal pension, a pension, other sources of income that you may have is greater than what's going out. To live the life that you design, you've reached your freedom day. It's not based off of projections or guardrails or cutting the, the safe withdrawal rate of 4% down to 2.4%, which isn't a 50% haircut, but 40 something percent. I mean, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to worry about that because you have taken your money that you have worked your life for, worked for during your life, and you're investing it in companies that have moats, that, that pay increasing dividends to shareholders. And that's where your expertise as the portfolio manager comes in and where all of the math comes in. And you can look somebody in the eye or look your spouse in the eye and say, look, I've taken that money and we've invested it. We now own these companies and we'll continue to own them, that will pay me pay raises. And our last episode, we talk, um, we, we went through some of the most discussed sectors of the economy, um, distressed sectors, and we talk about what are the companies in these sectors doing and how are they raising their, their dividend and what are they doing? And it, it takes away all of the fear and you can say, here we go. Look, I've built this plan. I can rely on it. It's not based off of projections or math or something that I'm going to have to edit, you know, 20 years into living the life I want. I, I'll never have to sell my dream home that I built and downgrade in, you know, to something smaller or rent something because we're not using these fictitious figures and, and back tests to build a plan and look forward. We're basing this off of what is real. And to me, that is incredible. The, the only thing that I've noticed increasing and, and the other prediction I'll make is it, it's going to ramp up considerably from here with these more sophisticated strategies of how do we solve for the new version of safe withdrawal rates. The only thing increasing consistently is, is anxiety um, for investors. Um, so the deeply informed holy grail in our experience is making this simpler, not for simple sake, but for what works. And we talked about a couple episodes ago and I just use myself as an example, and that's all we're doing on the show, open up our playbook. Um, th this is not the only answer, but this is what's special to us and the reason we want to do this. Anybody can do this. If you want help, if you want a guide, we're certainly available and our team can point you in the right direction or help directly. But anybody out there listening to this, if they believe, and, and we had a call and it was great. It was the most sophisticated, complex shop, managed futures. Wall Street experts said, I'd never heard anybody talk about a three or four percent triple a rated insured tax-free bond net 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 of all friction i have zero flinching i've taken the behavior out if that's free cash flow and i marry that very simply with the other requirement for freedom day in our opinion is you have to have a, a stream that is outpacing inflation that's the only problem with that fixed insured bond my my safe money the rising dividend stream which in a few short years can be considerably higher than the 4% yield on cost with the safest, most conservative, highest quality sources. If 4% safe and 6, 8, 10% and rising, I simple back of the envelope math and you only need a pencil to do this. You don't need the 178 page wealth plan. Of the, I'll take it up against any of the most sophisticated plans. I think half in each of those exceeds 
this save withdrawal rate that everybody is going to be debating for the rest of our careers again and under harsher circumstances and harder math, in my opinion. And that's the thing I love about math. It doesn't need any room for opinions, including my own. Um, it really can be that simple. And then whatever is left after you know your needs and that those income streams cover it with extra cash for contingency, whatever's left, if you want to keep working, if you want to invest more, put 100% of that at risk. And we'll talk about those opportunities as well. And you have your own listening to this that'll be independent of ours. You could lose everything in the speculative sleeve if you've got the safe and the sacred knocked out answering your freedom day, which is what really you get excited about. So all of a sudden, what sounds like the safest and most conservative approach, which is where we start, actually unlocks the ability to take more risk and never be worried about that, you've completely turned upside down this question and removed yourself from the crowd and I hope the best of ways. And it took me a long time to learn that, just like you. So I don't, well, I'm happy to share and will continue to share. It's not easy, but it is that simple. I absolutely love it. And I promised myself to not stand on my virtual box in Hyde Park preaching the gospel of yield on cost. Um, but the plans, you know, the safe, the sacred, they're designed so that you don't have to worry. And then any extra money can go into that speculative sleeve. And it's the cherry on top. Like you always say, if there are any surprises, it's going to be to the upside. And to me, that's, that's the foundation that we want to build uh, financial plans and portfolios on. If anybody has any questions, would like to reach out to us, jump on the phone or a Zoom call with myself or with Ryan or with both of us, please shoot us an email at team at Freedom Day Solutions. You can check out our website at freedomdaysolutions.com. We have hundreds of blogs. Um, check out the library, podcasts, or YouTube. If you like this, we would definitely appreciate it if you would share it or reach out to us, and we will see you next week. This show is brought to you by Freedom Day Solutions, LLC, a registered investment advisory firm advising individuals and families nationwide. Performance is not guaranteed and past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. To learn more, visit freedomdaysolutions.com. This show contains general information that is not suitable for everyone and was shared for informational purposes only. Any forward-looking statement or opinion expressed is subject to change without notice. Nothing contained herein constitutes investment, legal, tax, or other advice nor is it to be relied on in making investment or other decisions. Clients of Freedom Day Solutions may hold positions in the securities discussed.